Look at you guys tuning back into another episode of Rust Belt's Nifty Tools of the Week, where I go through a bunch of tools that have helped me get through my job here at the dealership and showcase some of these tools that have helped me get through everything this week. Hopefully you guys are able to use these tools just as easily as I have. Make sure you stay tuned. First up on our nifty tools this week is going to be the Snap-on PWZ set of pliers. Specifically this one that I have today is the PWZ2. Uh, this is a 17 inch version of the plier set and they're a fully adjustable wrench. So how you're able to work this thing is the adjustment rod right here has a threaded rod all the way down, able to adjust this one up. The PWZ 2.0 is able to adjust up to about a two and three quarter to three inch opening here at the end. These are absolutely fantastic when it comes to hard on um, little nuts and everything and alignments. Alignments are the biggest bread and butter for these wrenches. The backside has a nice grip, so when you're gripping onto these, all you have to do is put a slight amount of pressure in just how the head itself is kind of elongated here and it, the teeth are ready to bite into just about anything you guys need. Now the PWZ pliers, they come in range from the one all the way up through the five. I think the ones are right around a 12 and five eighths inch uh, pliers. The fives, they are all the way up to, I think a 28 or a 30 inch set of these pliers. So everything all the way up through, you know, just to handle any jobs that you guys need. The PWZ 2.0 pliers that I've got right here, these run about $80, and like I said, you they range from the one all the way up through the five right now. The ones run right at like, I think 57, and then all the way up to the fives that are like $220. You know, it's a lot of steel in those pliers, but trust me, these are fantastic when you're getting into alignments or having to break loose very large fasteners. Um, they're just all in all a fantastic set of pliers. I would definitely recommend for you guys to check these out. Next up on the list is going to be the Snap-on EECT400 test light. It's an LED test light along with a nice little screen here to be able to show the voltage. I know I've shown this one before as well, but this week this one has absolutely worked fantastic and I have been able to use this one about 30 times this week. Uh, it's able to be used between 3 and 19 volts and the little LED lights that I'm going to show you guys here is able to point out whether you're on power and or ground. So if you've got this thing hooked up to a power source and you're trying to find a ground, it's going to light up green. Opposite direction, if you guys are looking for power and you're hooked up to ground, it's going to be able to flash red there for you. Now the other cool thing about it is that once you do connect onto here and you're looking to see what kind of voltage you have, the little screen right here is able to show you what voltage you have. So right here it says we've got 12.2 volts where we're holding right there. All in all, this thing's got about a uh, four and a half foot cable. So it's very nice in that aspect. Uh, they do have a couple of other kinds where they sh are able to see the, uh, the cable that is actually like wound, coil wound. I personally did not like that one as well. I like this one the best that has the, uh, the black end. The coiled ones also came in, I believe, uh, red, green, and orange. But like I said, I prefer the ones that are just the standard flat cable. Like I said, this thing has been a fantastic tool to be able to use for diagnostic purposes. Never had any kind of issues with it. And uh, just all in all, a really good LED test light for you guys to check out. Third up on our nifty tools this week is going to be the Lyle 52500 
noise uh, diagnostic stethoscope. I know you guys have seen these before and whether you guys have had the chance to actually use them or not, it's something that you will need to use as a new technician. Learning on one of these is one of the best things that you could have in your toolbox. Whether it comes to diagnosing fuel pumps or uh, pulley bearings, things on the accessory drive, this is a quintessential tool that you guys must have. Uh, it's very cheap, very inexpensive, and something that any technician should find in their box. Uh, this one you can find on Amazon for right at $14.75. So a really cheap tool. Uh, if you guys do end up breaking these things, they do sell the little earplugs for them. They do sell the new tips and all. But like I said, at the cost of $14, $15, bucks, you're just going to end up buying a new one anyways. Uh, the little diaphragm, we take this apart here. It All it is is a little steel tube right here with a really thin diaphragm here screwed into the end. Able to screw that one right onto there. They do have a couple of different attachments as well. They have a little uh, drum ear that you could put onto the end of this as well. But for 90% of the things that you guys are diagnosing, looking for the noises and all, you guys are just gonna use this little steel rod here. Uh, pretty easy to find, pretty easy to use. Uh, it's one of those things where if you guys haven't used it, you definitely should be using it and definitely get you one of these or something like it. Last but not least on this week's nifty tools list is going to be the Snap-on EEPV 509 cylinder leak down tool. Now this one through Snap-on, if you order it on the website, is going to run you 314 bucks. Usually you're able to get these on special on the truck for, you know, right at or under $300. Let's open the kit here and see what you guys get in this kit. We've got a, a nice little sheet here just to show you the different diagnostic gauge sets that they have to offer. Yeah, we don't really need that one. We also have the owner's manual showing you guys your warranty, how to use it in seven different languages. Yeah, really, really useful as well. If you guys don't know how to use the product, this is able to show you how to use it as well. So getting into what is actually in the kit, you com it comes with one single spark plug adapter uh, what would you would use for like a compression gauge set, except for this one does not have any kind of one-way check valve to it. So if you guys are going to be using uh, this kit for testing any other things like the Chrysler 3.6 liter engines, they have a smaller thread and a smaller diameter set here that you guys are going to use. So the adapters for the compression gauge sets, they will work. You just need to make sure you take out the one-way valve. It comes with an extended adapter as well. This one, obviously, it's only got the uh, half inch long thread there, and then this one's got the one that is about three quarters of an inch long worth of threads to get down into those harder to reach areas. So you got that adapter, as well as a packet with a couple of fresh O-rings for the ends of it. Getting into the actual tool here, let's get you guys a little bit of a close up on it. So here on our gauge set, we've got our inlet pressure. This is the pressure that's coming in from your supplied airline at the shop. The regulator on this side as well to regulate that. And then on the right side, this is going to show your, you your actual percentage of cylinder leak down. Shown here in a high amount of leak down, moderate and low as well. Uh, the quick disconnect right here is going to be able to uh, adapt like i said to any of the other compression gauge adapters but like i said you'll want to make sure that you take out any of those one-way check valves if you're going to be using it for this kit so what you've got to do is you have to supply your own air nipple for your air system you're going to plug in your shop air and make sure this is turned all the way down so that it just reads zero inlet pressure when you first start Supply the air into it, and then all of a sudden, and then all you need to do is rotate the regulator adjuster. You will see this arrow start to rise. Rotate it up all the way until you hit that 100 psi mark here on the gauge. At the 100 psi mark, that is where you can regularly take your reading for your cylinder leak down. We actually used it on this Avenger that you guys saw earlier that I put the uh, test light on and it showed that we had a 75% leak down on two of the four cylinders. 
All in all, this is a very easy tool to use. It's very nice for using it on uh, compression checks on motors that you think may or may not have jumped time, may have some internal damage. You have to make sure that once you're testing the certain cylinder, uh, you have to make sure that cylinder is on top dead center of the cylinder that you are testing. You know, stick a little coat hanger down into the spark plug hole, then you can make sure it's on top dead center put in your little spark plug tube adapter. And then also you wanna make sure either you, if you're able to reach it, or a helper is able to hold onto the crank because once you start putting air pressure to this, once you start hitting about 50 PSI or so, it's going to start pushing that cylinder down, which is not good. You don't want it to do that one. You want that thing to be on top dead center to be able to make sure all of the rings are seated and at top dead center, both of the valves are gonna be closed as well. So you're not gonna have a skewed result. Now the only negative thing that they have to this entire kit is once you have to add on your little nipple here, I will show you here on the case it actually does not fit into the case. So what I actually had to do was take a Dremel and grind out a portion of the side of the case to fit this into for storage. So right there, it's actually able to fit. So maybe Snap-on should have come up with a little bit better case since they know that you have to put the air nipple onto the tool to be able to use it correctly. And uh, probably would have been a easier for them to add a little bit extra room before putting your hose wrapped up here in the bottom because it kinks a little bit harder than I would like it to. It folds over 90 degrees twice and or 180 degrees twice and I personally don't like that. But all in all, like I said, a very nice kit. I would definitely recommend you guys to have one of these for diagnostic purposes in the dealership or in whatever shop that you guys are in. And then there's a couple of the channels that I really wanted to point out for you guys this week. I like to point out some of the smaller channels who are working themselves up and who just haven't really got that chance to shine. First off this week, I wanna introduce you guys to Autobahn Dan. Autobahn Dan is a really cool mechanic who is also doing tool reviews. He's walking through tool stores. He's doing unboxing, opening of different tool hauls. If you guys like tools and mechanic stuff in general, you guys will definitely want to check him out. Now, second on the list is going to be 410 or 410 Autotech. 410 is a really good buddy of mine. He's been uh, tuned into the channel for a long time and he's started up his own YouTube channel. He is a Chevrolet technician who lives in the Northeast. He goes through and he does some of the uh, vehicles, some of the tools, toolbox tours, things that he goes through in his everyday uh, life there at the dealership. He also has a really good Instagram account where he you know, tries to help and shout out other channels and other people as well, get people involved. All in all, it's a really good channel and I think that you guys definitely need to check him out as well. Well, that's about all I've got for this week's Nifty Tools of the Week. If you liked any of these tools, I will be sure to leave them down in the description below so you guys can check them out and get some links to where you can purchase them if you guys do like them. I appreciate all the support I've been getting here lately. We're on our way almost to 15,000 subscribers. And just to let you guys know, we will be doing a very large very awesome 15k giveaway so make sure you guys stay tuned for that one as well as a lot of really big things coming up in on the duramax build as well thanks again guys i appreciate it and as always you guys stay awesome